uh, dear farmers, I want to thank you so much for always following uh, the work we do by Robin Rosens Limited and myself. I'm always excited to uh, talk to you and we'll have a conversation and see how to move uh, this livestock uh, production journey um, together. Today I'm at the farm and uh, I'm going to talk about managing a successful livestock farm and I'm going to be general. I'm going to talk about feedlots and I'm, I'm also going to talk about uh, um, the milk, the dairy and the goats. One, what is very, very, very extremely important is to make sure that we have the feeds. When you have the feeds, look at these guys. Look at the, the, the stomach. They are full. They have had enough uh, uh, feeds. Uh, look at this one. Show them that one. That is our highest performer in terms of uh, uh, weight gain. And it is a cross between Ankole and uh, Bolan. I am always very excited to share this. One, if you want these animals to give you the best, you must be able to feed them as much as you can. And the only way you can successfully do that is when you have the pasture. So when you grow the pastures by yourself and you're able to harvest and uh, uh, bring at the farm. So I always say feed is first and then the animals can, can follow. Because when you have the feeds, when you have the pastures and you're able to make enough hay, you are able to make enough silage, you are able to cut fresh. I'll show them that one is going. You see how the how full the, the animal is. So when you have all these, then you can always decide any venture as far as livestock is concerned. Tomorrow if you woke up and you want to do a feedlot like myself, you just go. Put structures and just buy animals and you start immediately. When you want to go dairy, you will still just go. Because you have the feeds. When uh, whatever that you want to do, you will find yourself very, very comfortable. If you want to do goats, you just move because you have the feeds. So we must make sure that we plant enough pastures in terms of hay and production and in terms of uh, silage production. Uh, in my own view, you're going to set up the pastures according to the plan that you have. How? You, you look at how many animals do I want to begin with? This one will give you uh, how many acres you need to plant on each. Which system of grazing do I want to use? Then this one will also give you the number of acres you're going to establish. Are you doing semi-intensive? Are you doing intensive? Here we are definitely doing intensive fertilization. All the animals are full-time indoors. They are not moving out. So we make sure we provide them everything. So then, when that is done, 
you have enough feeds because when you have enough feeds the, the, the feeds will even dictate the number of animals you're going to have on the farm let the feeds dictate the number of animals do not buy many many animals and you don't you don't have what to feed them you will definitely get stressed so for us the beauty is we have enough gardens for hay and enough gardens for silage production now whatever we started with is finished and we have made another silage and we have made another hay definitely i knew that it will uh, get finished but still i was uh leveraging on uh, the fact that i will be able to cut again because i have the pastures on the farm so it is extremely important to have the feeds as much as you can then we can do other things now let's say the feeding is done and i'm i'm i'm, I'm talking so much about the basal feed the pastures so of course then when we zero down to what exactly we want to do then we shall also talk about the concentrates concentrates these are feeds that are fed in uh, small quantities then the basal feed the pastures those are fed in very large large, large quantities so when that is done then there is another element uh, called uh, breed. When you are raising animals, there is what we call feed conversion ratio. And in the feed conversion ratio, this is the ability of the animal to turn the feeds into a high quality product. That can be beef, that can be milk. So that ability of changing the feeds into the milk or the beef is the conversion ratio. Different breeds have got different conversion ratio. The better, uh, if you are looking at uh, beef animals, then you are looking at those animals that are meant for beef production. The Brahman, the Bran, the Bonzumaras, they, they are also those which are malpapas, the brown seas, the Frekvik, all the cementos. So, and if you go to Daire, then you're looking at the Ganzi, the Jazzies, the Frisian, and the rest. The Glandos and the rest. So here, you look also at the breed. I want to be able to convert these high quality feeds that I've set to get out the product. Then we look at the breed. Then we look at those breeds that are going to perform. In a feedlot, the crosses are doing extremely well. In the milk production, they are also trying, but yeah. So, the higher the ability of the animal to convert the feed is the better. Because when you go get animals that are not going to convert feeds and you put them in a, a feedlot, then you will find that they are just eating your feeds, as I'm going to show you in some of the videos. They are going to, 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 to eat your feed and you are not going to get uh, uh, money out of that. When all that is done, then management. Management includes a lot of things. Management includes uh, the workers on the farm. Are the workers doing what you tell them when you are not at the farm? Management includes health of the animals. Are animals health? Do you have uh, a veterinary doctor that is going to handle your animals? Because some animals will always get sick. So do you have a vet who knows what they are doing? Can, can you be able to identify the problem and solve it? Because when, when we have animals in the feedlot, we do not want them to get sickly all the time. That means they are not going to uh, uh, give us a weight. Then the planning part of it. When you plan, you definitely know exactly what you want to do where you want to go and how to uh, get there. If you're going to do batch feed lotting, then we're also going to talk about that. So when we have all those factors put in place, and once the feeds are there, then they are stored. Once they are stored, then the workers know how to feed uh, them and, 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 manage, and manage them, how to mix them and feed them. So eventually, 
we are able to do a successful livestock farm. Then I want to appreciate uh, um, people watching uh, from all over the world. We are so excited to uh, be being of uh, help to everyone out there watching our channel. I want to thank you so much. Please comment. Tell us where you're watching from. Tell us what you're uh, learning. Tell us what you would want us to cover in subsequent videos so that we are able to uh, help you. There are people who are not in Uganda who are unable to visit, uh, uh, visit the farm. And I want to be uh, sure to make sure that wherever you are, you are learning. Even if you're not in Uganda, you're able to learn and do a feedlot without even visiting uh, the farm physically. So I want you to be telling us exactly what you want us to, to, to cover. And do not forget, this video is sponsored by um, Robran Mall. Robran Mall is uh, a delivery company, especially those in Uganda, in Kampala, metropolitan area. Robran is able to uh, deliver everything to use at home. Call it vegetables, uh, call it fashion wear, what you need to wear, call it everything. It's found on www.lobrandmall.org.com or you can find the app on uh, uh, Google Play Store. Please trust Robran for Robran Mall for your home uh, deliveries. Otherwise, I want to thank you so much for always following. We are here to make sure that we run this journey together and we help each other. Thank you so much.